Innovation in glass technology has certainly transformed the skylines across our major cities throughout the world. Today, I'm in Liverpool, a city that has a long history of industrial prestige. It's here, at the heart of this iconic city, at the Materials Innovation Factory, where scientists from the University of Liverpool are pushing the boundaries of materials innovation. So it's fitting that a building like this one should be built with cutting edge materials, particularly when it comes to glass. The Materials Innovation Factory was built in 2017, and I'm keen to find out more about what actually goes on behind the scenes here. Now the guy I'm here to meet is a guy called Matt Reed. He's the head of strategy here at the Material Innovation Factory, but of course, before I meet him, it is a working laboratory, so I have to suit up. So Matt, you have been involved with the Materials Innovation Factory here in Liverpool since the beginning. Since about 2013. So I led the investment from Unilever in this facility, and it was a co-investment with the university, with Unilever and the UK government. So I've been involved right from the start. So what we're trying to do here is taking really world-leading science and knowledge leadership in materials chemistry, and we're creating innovation from that. So those materials might be a new battery material, it could be a new plastic, or it could be a new shampoo, and all of those innovations are going on here in the building all at the same time. How important was you know, the aesthetics of the building? We have an open by design philosophy, the way we work, and we wanted to communicate that with the building. And we wanted the atrium to be a space where people can meet, people can interact, and things can happen in the middle of the building, right at the heart of the building. Did the sort of building materials that you use really come into your mind? Yeah, so this is an innovation facility, and we wanted innovative materials as part of the fabric of the building. Pilkington glass is, is one of those elements and we work with Pilkington UK at their Innovation Centre in Latham. That's part of our ongoing collaboration. Well, I'll leave you to it. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you. The stunning glass atrium at the heart of this building was made possible by using structural glazing. So I want to talk to someone who can explain more about how innovations in glass have allowed this to be possible. Phil Savage, from Pilkington UK is someone who has seen huge changes in the use of glass over his career that have unquestionably shaped skylines across the world. Hi Phil, how are you? Uh, good to meet you. Phil, you've been working with Pilkington UK, which is part of the NSG group now for quite a long time. And in that time, you must have seen the skylines across the world change. Yes, I joined Pilkington um, over 40 years ago. There's been significant change. We've seen it in, the, in, in London across the Canary Wharf developments, the major change of the London city skyscraper. But then beyond that, we've been involved with schemes in Europe, in the Middle East, the Far East, in Hong Kong, and very most recently in North America, including the Hayden Planetarium at the uh, American Museum of Natural History. We've worked on the American Dream Mall at East Rutherford, New Jersey, and the Eli Broad Center for Research into STEM cell development. All those amazing buildings have been made possible really through innovation in glazing. You know, just one product, for instance, Pilkington Plain, is structural glass. Yes, certainly the first point is glass. Glass has changed phenomenally over that period of time in terms of its performance, flexibility, scale, the things that you can do with it. And that leads us into how you connect glass onto buildings. And the Pilkington Plain our system, as you say, is a very uh, attractive and creative way of doing that, which gives the architects the ability to design on any plane. Pilkington Plane was developed in the, in the 1980s as a single monolithic system generally for, for doors and ground floor treatments, but it's evolved from that to, to be used on facades, roof glazings, canopies, feature glazing throughout the world. And even here in Liverpool, at the Materials Innovation Factory, this beautiful facade you know, wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Pilkington. Innovation technology is in Pilkington's DNA and I think it's great that we've been able to move a product from 50 years to where it is today and still be a leading edge in terms of commercial construction. It is fantastic. Lovely to meet you. you too. Thank All the you best. Sir. So there you have it. It's almost unquestionable that innovation in glass technology has almost certainly changed the skylines across the cities of the world and it's down to products such as Pilkington Planar, a structural glazing that allows architects 
to design stunning buildings like this one. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>